Hey everybody and welcome to Chew Stream. If you're catching this live and it's your first time on the stream, it's interactive so feel free to ask questions in the chat and we'll try to answer as many as we can. Just type the word question in big capital letters before you type your question so that we can see it easier. I'm co-hosting today with my good friend and painter extraordinaire Jonathan Hardesty and our guest today is none other than Wouter Tulp character designer and illustrator his versatility as an illustrator is just insane having illustrated over a hundred children's books as well as characters editorial illustrations character design for film i love the life that he puts into his characters and posing something that many of us have trouble with if you have trouble with this as well i highly re recommend his schoolism class, Expressive Characters with Wouter Tulp. He teaches his students lessons on proportions, dimensionality, angles, dynamics, weight, hair, clothing, facial expressions, character, acting, and character relationships. And you get assignments as well to help you truly absorb the material. So without further ado, here is the wonderful Wouter Tulp. And welcome, Wouter. Hi, Bobby. Thank you for having me. Right on. And, of course, we have my guest co-host today, one and only Jonathan Hardesty. What's up, Internets? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, so why don't we go to the very first question. I want to ask a question. You know, I <laughs> that's part of why I do these streams. Uh, when you are character designing uh, for film, because that's more kind of related to what I do, Wouter, uh, what are what are kind of like the main points that you put the most importance on? Um, well, first of all, I I read the script or the outline or whatever is available at the time, so I I really try to understand this character in. Uh, in the st within the story, um, you know the characters. They always have uh, some a purpose. The, you know the story is the thing that that carries a message. Uh, the whole movie is is often something uh, giving a message to to the one uh, looking at the movie. And the, the characters they are the ones driving the story. They all have their place. Within that story, they have uh, they're almost like symbols for philosophies they they represent. So that's what I'm I'm really looking for. What is the the essence of this character? Can you give a, kind uh, of like an example of like philosophy? You know? um, yeah, of course. Um, think of uh, uh, Remy in uh, Ratatouille. Uh, he says uh, anyone, or, or I mean Gusto, the Gusto uh, cook. He says anyone can cook. So. Every time we see him uh, in the movie, that's what he'll say in, in different versions of it. But every time he will say, anyone can cook. So that's his purpose in the story, to, to remind Remy of that part of, of what he believes in. Um, so that's something that I, I want to understand because uh, very often it's, it's really uh, clear for each character what their role is. And... Uh, uh, if you think of um, uh, Zootopia, then you have this uh, this little rabbit, and she has uh, kind of a similar belief, uh, saying anyone can be anything. And uh, throughout the story, she encounters other characters that will tell her, "No, you can't. No, you can't," because she, she believes she she uh, even as a small rabbit, she's able to become a policeman police woman, police girl in a, in a big city and nobody believes her. And every time, hopefully, you know, she hopeful she goes to this city and she believes that she will become this police officer and everyone, even her parents and her best friend and everyone tells her, no, you can't. And she comes into situations and they are there to test her conviction, to test her if what she believes in, uh, how she will respond to it. Will she follow through on that belief or will she give up um, so that's something that I that I try to uh, to keep in mind 
uh, because that's what's driving this, you know, the essence of, of what this character stands for. Um, I'm trying to think of the character in relationship to the others. You know, you want to have them stand out uh, almost as, as fingerprints. Uh, when you see Mickey Mouse, you, you know it's Mickey Mouse because of the visual shape he has, mm -hmm. which is also a, a, a clear thing uh, in a movie. You know, a character runs uh, over the screen only for a few seconds, so you don't want to be mistaken which character this is. So if it's mm -hmm. a clear symbol visually, it helps to, to communicate who this character is. Um, let's see. Uh, you know, the personality. I, I spend a lot of time uh, on the acting of the character, uh, trying to uh, get into the mind, almost like an actor would do. Uh, you know, if I if I just heard my my family died in a in a terrorist attack, I will enter the room in a completely different way than when I heard I won the lottery. Uh, I'm the mm -hmm. same person, but I will respond in different ways. Um, and you can also uh, take this as example and uh, and turn it around, uh, thinking, um, you know, if I win the lottery, I have a certain personality, I will respond in a certain way to that news, uh, but maybe somebody else uh, will just say, hmm, that's nice, uh, and, and another person will, will just start jumping and running and, and telling everybody, so our personalities really determine how we will respond in certain situations and I think Do you think about people that you know of and and try to extrapolate their personality and put it into the characters oh absolutely uh, and and very often this is also uh, give, these things are given as an example by the director they will uh, because at the beginning you you ha there's nothing there's just a line on the paper saying well this character is doing this and this and you are trying to communicate who this character will be by referring to things that we do know so uh, you know when I say this uh, this guy has the, the same kind of personality of Jack Nicholson in The Shining uh, mm -hmm. but but he looks uh, sweet and fluffy then uh, <laughs> yeah. that that's something you can work with uh, because we know this Jack Nicholson guy, but it has to be different. So, you know, then you know the kind of feeling you are looking for. Does that does that make its way into the like the physical, or, or I guess I should say, how specifically does that make that way into the physical characteristics of the character when you design it too? Like, for instance, if um, you know, if you have a character that like like the like the the rabbit in Zootopia, right? So she has to mm -hmm. conquer all these things. Now, what what physical traits do you alter to sort of reinforce that like do you make her eyes bigger so she looks a little bit more innocent or do you, you know whatever i mean that that's a simple uh, way yeah, to, to describe well, it yeah, uh, of course i didn't des design that character but uh you can right. you can clearly tell that that they made her look really sweet and cuddly it's not mm -hmm. a a fierce dangerous animal uh so i think that's that's really what they tried to put in there and and uh, when i look at that movie and i see just you know the hands of that character it it really makes me want to pick her up and and hug her you know it's mm -hmm. so cute and uh so those are things you try to incorporate and it can even be uh, uh visually um you know visual traits of of the character you are referring to if you think of uh um um the the bird from uh lion king he looks really a lot like Rowan Atkinson, who also did the right. voice of that character. So uh, I think they they play with these things, uh, mm. helping you to, uh, you know, maybe even if you are not fully aware of it, subconsciously it may help to relate to the personality of Rowan Atkinson also. That's awesome. Well, yeah, yeah but like, uh, and to add to that, most of the time, you know, when you're dealing with a film, especially you're really trying to sell the acting in your character designs. Hmm. You know, because you, you could take two different act or the same actor, give him two different characters, and all of a sudden he looks or she looks like two different people. Absolutely. Mm. Mm. Very interesting. That's 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 really interesting. Yeah. That's cool. Um there's a, there's some questions coming in. You want me to cover some of these? Um, yeah, definitely. 
There's Let's one see, actually Conrad. for you as well, I think. Oh, or, there is? No, oh, sorry. Okay. It said essentials, <laughs> and I was like, oh, essentials of realism. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, it says, uh, any particular children's books I may know of that he's illustrated? Conrad asked that question. Um, I don't know. Uh, not so many have been published outside of the Netherlands, I think, uh, especially America. Um, so I... I I wouldn't know. <laughs> I, right. Uh, Not for English speakers, right? <laughs> no, I, I think maybe there is a, a, a little golden book I did for the Van Gogh Museum, and they, uh, they have it uh, distributed in, uh, to museums worldwide. So that may oh, be cool. uh, a book that, uh, that you know. Well, that's awesome. That's cool. It is, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's really fun. Um, now, okay, next... so... Oh, okay. oh, yeah, go ahead, Bobby, go ahead. I was going to say the next question is kind of like uh, some stuff that we already talked about before. Oh, actually, here's a good question. Which schoolism class would you recommend for younger artists? And uh, just so you don't plug your own class, uh, Jonathan, I would say <laughs> yours is a really great one because it deals with the fundamentals, and you should always start with the fundamentals when you're, you know, learning anything. Um, so... Yeah, observation. Yeah, learning yeah, to observe and, properly. Go, oh, go ahead, Vera. Yeah, uh, maybe also uh, Thomas Fluharty's uh, drawing mm -hmm. fundamentals. It's also awesome. a yes. fundamental class. There's actually a few. Super good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so maybe we could just go on to the next question here. So the next question, we kind of talked about a bunch of it already. It says, "What are some uh, essential things to learn and practice for character design?" Um, so, you know, we talked a, a lot about the shape and how the character looks and how they might resemble um you know the actor that's playing them but what are other things that we can learn and practice perhaps uh some of the lessons that you teach in your class Wouter, uh maybe you can kind of go over a few of the yeah that's points. that was what i was thinking of immediately because um you know things like shape and uh and uh the clothing and what the character looks like you know the designing of the visual uh design of the character is something that we instantly think of um but i like to draw inspiration from animation uh, first of all the the characters that i design they are going to be animated uh, but looking at the principles of animation they really offer so much insight in showing you know even if you take one still of a of a series of uh, animated drawings uh, they give so much insight on how to show weight or movement or force in a in a character design and that's something that I that I teach in the in the course to to show really how uh, how is weight distributed when a character is walking or when he's lifting something that's heavy or when he's lifting something that's light, uh, things like that. And I think that understanding these principles of force, uh, this is also how the, how the course actually is, is designed. To start with these principles, they are more or less technical principles, just showing weight, showing movement, uh, and eventually to incorporate it in designs that uh, then we're focusing on the acting, uh, and that's when you use those uh, those principles uh, because it's not about the techniques themselves. It's about you know uh, if a character feels shy and uh, you know the shoulders they they go forward a little bit and the hand they they go in front of the body and the the, the head goes lowers a little bit. W what I'm describing now is uh, a, something that you would see visually that would communicate an emotion. If I step into a room and you know nothing about me, you can already tell something about how I feel about uh, um, my emotional state uh, just by the way I move. And it can be really subtle, but uh, as a designer, we don't have motion or we don't have spoken words. I, I can only do this drawing of this character. So I have to communicate what this character feels like in just this drawing so that's why I, I like to study uh, you know the movement and and body language of, of people uh, to help this to tell my story with the character to be honest Valder 
Are you, uh, when you're with your friends, you're like not thinking about what they're saying, right? You're just like observing their <laughs> behavior and, oh, absolutely, and looking at yeah. them. <laughs> Yeah. I can see like when something crazy happens in a restaurant or something like that, you know, you're, you, you're, I would, you'd be like, oh, this is great. This is great. I can, I can take notes. Right. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I like to, to also to, uh, to take, uh, YouTube videos, you know, mm. there are, are so many useless, uh, clips that you accidentally see when you're scrolling on your Facebook feed or something. And mm. I just, if you know, you don't want to look at them, but they start playing and, for uh, before you know it, you uh, you are, are uh, you know half an hour into, the, into this <laughs> clip that's useless. But I I found out that if I just use this to study, then suddenly it becomes interesting because then you see somebody become really angry and you see what he does, and this gives inspiration and ideas because it's real people getting angry or happy or uh, laughing, and they do things that you just wouldn't think of. They behave in, in different ways. They, they use their body in, in ways that, uh, yeah, there's so much to learn from that. It's really interesting because when you're talking about everything, I almost feel like I'm talking to someone who's training to be an actor. Do you know what I mean? Like when you're mentioning all these things, it's like you're, you're studying these uh, behaviors and things like that. Now, you're not actually doing them yourselves, but you, yourself, but you're, you're putting those, you know, into your characters. So it's, it's amazing to hear you talk about that. You know, I wonder if are acting resources and things like that really, really good for what you do? Is that a good oh, resource? Absolutely, absolutely. I especially like to uh, to look at um, um, what's it called the, the audition tapes mm. uh, because there, there, uh, you know, everything that uh, the decoration and and the the filters and everything is is gone, and we just see the the actors. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's so pure. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I like to look at that a lot. That's really cool. Um, to kind of change gears for one second, uh, Juan Pedro uh, asks uh, about the workshop that we have in uh, Mexico that that is happening real quick. You know, like it's just we're a little behind on the website we need to put it on the website but yeah schoolism is coming to mexico it's going to be awesome, awesome. Cool. um four artists uh luke de marchelier victoria ying uh i should know the others but i just i got too many things to remember these days um <laughs> So if you see it, get on it because, yeah, it's real. It's happening. It's going to be awesome. First time in Mexico, Schoolism Live. This weekend is going to be in London, and then the next weekend is going to be in Berlin. So, uh, you know, if you were ever curious about Schoolism Workshops, highly recommended because not only do you get a kind of turbo boost and level up in your knowledge and your creativity, your inspiration, but you also get to meet the artists that you, you know, you admire and, and you meet other artists that are like-minded artists like yourselves that are just hungry to learn. You know, building that network is super important. So I just want to mention that real quick. Let me yeah, say this too. Super I, inspiring. Oh, sorry, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, no, that's all right. Um, I met Bobby, like, so I, I, I actually, you know, knew Bobby, uh, and, and that's what led to me being able to teach at, at schoolism and stuff like that. And I met him at a workshop. I met him at, uh, at something very, very similar to, you know, yeah. what's going to be there in Mexico. And, and that was a long time ago. That was when you and I both, I mean, you were, you were at more, you were way ahead of me at the time, but, but, you know, we were both, you know, kind of on our way towards a career, you know, and, and, uh, so you, you, you meet people, you meet like these artists that are going to help you, but you also meet your peers who are going to end up being, you know, superstars like Bobby Chu, you know, and so get in there and, and make the connections and it's, it's definitely worth it. It's worth it for the in-person side of things. Yeah. You know, time does a lot, doesn't it, John? It does. It does. Time, time does a lot to your body too. Like it's, <laughs> I'm noticing that, you know, <laughs> what are you talking about? Like I don't recover. Hair growing I'm out saying of like, ears I'm, or something. <laughs> Yeah, that guy, that's what I'm saying. And like, and when I'm with all these young guys at the gym that are recovering in two seconds, and I'm like breathing heavy, I'm like, dang it, you know. Mm, yeah. <laughs> but it's all right. One thing that uh, Wouter and I have in common 
is uh, this exercise program called Wim Hof, the Wim Hof method. Oh, you do the Wim Hof too? Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, did you too? I I haven't gotten it yet, but I really want to try it because Bobby was talking to me about it. And um, Alice, or, uh, what's his name? Alistair Overeem, a, a fighter that mm-hmm. that I like to watch in the in the UFC. He did he did it, and and he really swore by it. He said it was awesome. Oh, yeah. So so yeah, I wanted to try. That's cool. Oh man, I gotta do that. I gotta do it. <laughs> it looks crazy, you know. It looks crazy. It's like I mean, crazy good. I mean, crazy in a good truth. way. Ice well, every, is the truth. I, everybody <laughs> I I have met that that heard about it or wanted to do it uh, at, the, at the beginning they they said you know uh, because for the people who, who are unfamiliar with it it, it is uh, Wim Hof is a uh, um, he's called the ice man he has uh, numerous world records swimming under the ice uh, walking a marathon in the desert without drinking water uh, he even had uh, uh, a kind of a virus injected in his body that he could neutralize just by his mental power. Uh, Turning sounds on crazy, his immune but system. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And it sounds crazy, but it was scientifically proven that that is what he did. Um, and he has this method um, that is uh, basically what, how he describes it is uh, health, happiness, and strength. I think. Um, mm. so, and one of the things is a breathing exercise, uh, and the other thing is, uh, the cold. So when you do the, uh, the workshop, you do breathing exercises. And after that, you will go into an ice bath and everybody who hears about that for the first time thinks now, why would I do that? And that's exactly what I thought when I heard about it, um, um, because, you know, I, I really, uh, in my childhood, I, I had bad times when it was winter. I uh, couldn't stand the cold at all. Mm. So I wasn't eager to do this uh, <laughs> inning, but um, I decided to do it just to, to see, you know, how I would deal with this. And it's really amazing how much you are capable of if you you know, put your mind to it. it yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's really awesome. And, and it also has uh, uh, health effects. You know, if, if you are committed and keep doing this, not necessarily the ice bath, but the cold showering and the breathing exercises, you know, the breathing exercises help to uh, put more oxygen in your lungs. The, you know, the capacity of your lungs increases and the cold helps to... Um, uh, to activate the the veins, so the uh, the oxygen gets transported in your body better. So it's really you you become healthier, and you you really notice this if you do this every day. You you just feel more energized and and healthy. And to bring it back to art, like for people with uh, sore back and like uh, mm-hmm. sore arms and stuff, it actually really helps your cardiovascular system. So you do feel better. Like, uh, it's not like it's going to cure you, perhaps, maybe it will, but um, there is definitely relief after you do the, the method. You know, when you talked to me about it, Bobby, I, um, I didn't know much about it, but I just knew, I, like, I don't know if it was you or someone else sent me, like, like, something where it was like the, maybe it was you, Bobby, that you sent me something like the power of the cold shower or something like that. And so I started doing that, and I do that all the time now, and... You know, like, so when I wake up and I feel like not, I feel tired and stuff like that, you know, I'll take a, a cold shower and it's like instantly like, boom, I'm like, it's, it's, it's really bad. You know, it's, it, it, it's bad up front, you know, but I do that. And then, and, but you, when I'm out of there, it's it literally, it's like my brain's in a different state. So, you know, it's, you got to do it with a, the breathing exercises. It takes it to I a know. whole nother dimension. You know, it's it's awesome. completely different. But before we go too far uh, into yeah, right. Hoff stuff, <laughs> yeah. let's go back to some uh, questions. OK, so um, Sebastian Santos asks a really great question. How can I get how can I make my own style if I if I've been referencing my idols style for two whole years? Mine is uh, James jeans style mm. uh, do you you want to take that one bobby or i don't i mean i can take that one too but but uh i don't know yeah i mean for me like what i would say is 
is, you know, I think everybody kind of starts that way. Um, but I think what I remember somebody talking about this, this, uh, voice instructor was talking about, uh, she, 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 uh, was a, a voice instructor for people that, um, were singing like harder rock. And everybody was like, I want my voice to sound like Chris Cornell. I want to sound like Chris Cornell. And I think one of the distinctions that she made with them was she said, she said, well, you're a baritone or whatever. And they said, I know, but I want to sound like Chris Cornell. And, and, and she said, you know, well, no, you don't want to sound like Chris Cornell. She said, you want to have the same emotion in your singing voice as Chris Cornell. So I think, I think that's the key. So, you know, it like at first everybody kind of says, what brushes do you use? What exact way do you do this? You know, and, and, and that's the focus at first. But then at a certain point you start to, you want to start to dive in and say, what is the emotional quality? What are like the, the, you know, sort of, uh, the, the deeper things that, that this artist is thinking about when they're making their work, you know, like we're, we're hearing Vowder, like talk about, you know, everything that he's, that he's thinking when he's making his work. Right. So whether you use the exact pencil, whether you, you know, that's not even going to matter as much. What's more important is, is that, that mentality of like, okay, well, let me capture this, you know, emotional side. Let me capture the way someone is, is structured, what happens to their body. And then you start studying it on your own in the same way. And you come out with something a little bit different. So I think, I think it's, 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 uh, the key to breaking away from that is actually going deeper into the more foundational and fundamental things about the way that artist thinks, as opposed to like the specific techniques that they would utilize. I don't know if you guys want to add on that or disagree or whatever, but that's what I would say. Well, one yeah, thing, so, uh, yeah, I just make mine super quick. You know, one thing know, about the ahead, schools and classes is that, you know, if you look, there's, you know, Steven Silver, character designing with Steven Silver. There's uh, character designing for film with Daniel Ariega. And then there's expressive characters with Wouter. Which one should you take? Really, if you want to be a watered-down version of Steven Silver, then take Steven Silver's and so on and so forth for Daniel Ariega or Wouter. If you want to be an accomplished, you know, you know uh, individual and find your own voice, take all three. You know, because right. it's... It's studying how different people think about a lot of times the same subject that will give you the options and give you the starting point to creating your own voice. If you're only, you know, following one person, then there's not much options there. Yeah. Sorry, Wouter, I... Yeah, yeah well, I think, oh, oh, yeah, also following from what uh, Jonathan was saying is... Uh, what I think is uh, that uh, style will will follow if you just keep working, uh, because you know at first you just copy your icons and and you uh, try to mimic what they do and and that's how you learn. You need you need to learn the technique and do all the drawings. But uh, as you develop, you also discover new artists and take from them uh, what you like. And over time. All these things that you take from all these different artists, they will uh, become part of your system, and you will, you know, you will uh, be uh, on top of those principles, and uh, you can make your decisions. So you're not trying to make a drawing that, you know, that uh, works, uh, you know, but you know how to make a drawing that works, but you can choose how you want this character to look. So uh, you, you're on top of your game then. Uh, just like um, if you hear Miles Davis play the trumpet, uh, you know, sometimes he just plays one small note, and I, even a beginner could play that note. But, you know, he chooses the exact timing and length and sound of that note to be what he wants it to be. And when you hear Miles Davis play, there's, you know, that's Miles Davis. That's his right. unique voice. And the interesting thing is, uh, it's something that we're all looking for. I want to find my own style. And at the same time, I always compare it to, to your own voice. You know, everybody has their own voice. And you don't have to look for, you know, you don't have to search for it. You already have it. Right. And it's, it's just, uh, you know, getting all the stuff out of the way to, to let it, uh, be heard or something. I think it's, it's something like that. Yeah, that's good. Right on. Um, oh, Julia from the uh, Schoolism House, she has a question. What are the differences when you create a character for illustration versus one for animation? Um, 
Well, um, I think in illustration, uh, the character often has, depending on, on the project, if it's a children's book, you will go with them a little longer. But uh, for editorial work, for instance, it's just one drawing that you do. Uh, and for for movies, it's really, you know, in, in as an illustrator, you are the king. What you decide, that's what it's going to be. And in movies, you are... You have to be a team player. You are part of a team and you are cooperating and you're collaborating with the director. So you, it's, it's more like uh, throwing out ideas and uh, the director responds and says, well, I like this, but I don't like that. Can you try this? Can you give me some ideas for that? So uh, it's, it's not uh, necessarily coming up with this final design, but really helping the director uh, build his vision of who this character needs to be and uh, sometimes you're even working together with other character designers as well so it's uh, it's a it's a different process where in, in illustration uh, you know you can uh, have your own way of doing things if you want to do just one drawing and that's it then that's okay if you want to uh, do a couple of designs and try different things that's that's all uh, okay, I, I, I like to uh, personally uh, use some reference and, and really develop the design that I want to create. So it's, it's more than just my first initial idea, uh, but it's, it's much more um, my own uh, idea than, than in movies where it's really collaboration. Hmm. All right, Noah's got a question too. One method advised to use for character design is relying on archetypes, but uh, when she she said, but it results for me in somewhat uh, like a generic or expected design. Any advice on how to keep it fresh and surprising? Uh, could you repeat the the beginning of the question again? Oh sure, like she just said, like you know, a lot of times um, one method she's used is is using like a standard like archetype for you know her okay. stuff but it ends up with a really generic looking design is there any advice on how to how to keep that from happening okay um well one thing uh i like to do is is when i go out uh i have my sketchbook with me and i i just look at people and when you start doing that you develop a habit of of observing um you fill your head with information of how people can move react walk talk um so uh, if you have you know if if it's a generic thing you're going to um the information is it's it's really uh, reduced to to that's happy that's sad that's uh, you know a, 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 a small amount of of ideas so what you need to do is to expand the input you know, and it can be going out, or you can watch movies, or you can uh, pick a fight with someone and and see how they respond. <laughs> but re uh, I I really believe in in uh, finding reference to to have your designs grounded in reality. And it doesn't mean that you have to create realistic designs, but you know, just the the way somebody. Uh, 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 curls up the, the corner of his mouth when they smile. Maybe they do it in a specific way that that is just different than how you have seen it before. That's something that you can use even if if the design itself is really simple. Um, I, I recently saw uh, Gumball, the TV series, and those are really simplified designs, but they have facial expressions that are actually really subtle sometimes, and you mm. can just see that they really studied uh, the expressions of, of, of people in certain situations. Mm. Yeah, a lot of times it's not just a generic character design that makes it so generic, but it's the generic pose, you know? It's mm -hmm. like, how can you tell an, a, a black and white movie from a, a new movie, you know, if both of them were kind of shown to you in black and white? Well, a lot of the acting is just, it's a lot more kind of, uh, generic in in the beginning of uh, you know filmmaking and everything um, in the beginning of acting. 
Yeah, and and uh, uh, you know, responding to that, you can think of and that's what your uh, course your is all about, right? Water oh is, yeah, yeah, extrapolating that real character and putting it into exactly. something that can be expressive. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, because because uh, you know when you say uh, the pose of a character, if you think of a character, uh, you know, keeping a pose, that's something we hardly do in life. Just stand and posing. Uh, you can even see it when uh, somebody takes a picture of you and they say, uh, okay, smile. It's it's not the same as when somebody tells a joke and you really have to laugh about it. So if you think of your character as uh, an actual being that is walking, talking, moving, and you think, what is the action and what point of the action am I showing to to tell this story of this of this action, then suddenly the approach is, is completely different because it's not a, a, a character standing, but you think of a situation and how he's acting and behaving in that situation. And I think that's something that can really help to to bring more life to your designs. Dang it, man. I'm, you're talking, I'm like, I really want to take this class. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm really, oh, I'm you, thinking that because it, it's, it's it, I know, I, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's awesome because, I mean, it's just, Look, I mean, like the thing about the thing that's so fun about being an artist, too, is like, you know, I always say this, like people, ha people that bought my paintings, like they'll buy a landscape or whatever. It's because they want to be outside, but we get to mm -hmm. go outside and actually paint it and experience it and do it. And then the painting's like, OK, whatever. Yeah, I'm going to do another painting. It's doing another painting is the fun part, you know. And so, yeah. so, you know, if in the same way, you're like you, you really sound like a student of of behavior almost i I'm, I'm not sure i'd want to play poker against you to be honest with you <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know how to play poker <laughs> but if, if somebody taught you you'd probably you'd probably be amazing you know so oh. it's you know because you'd just be like oh that i saw that subtle shift in your in your uh be, you know in your <laughs> in your behavior so yeah it's 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 really cool i mean it, it and the thing about it is guys is that if you take a class like his i can tell by the way he's talking too that like you know it's he's going to teach you how to translate that to the designs, right? Because there's a, there's a process of observing it and then translating that and, and yeah. injecting that into a character. And, and that is a whole other side of the process. So, you know, man, that, that just sounds fascinating. I'm, I'm, you're on my list now, man, I'm going through things. <laughs> oh, man. I, I want to take your class too. Actually, I'm, I'm really, I love painting and I'm, I'm going to, uh, to attend a workshop by Jeremy Lipking in, in oh, three nice. weeks from now. Awesome. And, uh, I'm, I'm really... Oh, so that's happening. Uh, yeah, it's happening after all, yeah. Oh, there were some right. problems, but we, we uh, decided to organize the whole thing ourselves, and it's happening now, so nice. that's really cool. But yeah, I'm, I'm really, you know, building, building up towards this workshop. I'm, I'm so focused on painting right now. I'm, I'm really... You know, it's all I can think of. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's interesting, man, because I'm I'm like I started off like in the you know atelier side or the atelier side or whatever, and and um and so I'm actually now heading down more the imaginative route and things like that. That's really intriguing to me. And so, like for you, like when you when you have a a character that you're designing, right? So you have uh, what what like uh, for me, like I, I'm starting to learn how to think in terms of 3d and like i mean the actual technical side of of drawing a character like would would you say that um because what i'm finding is that perspective is a huge part of it and and not just perspective but being able to draw simple shapes in in 3d like ellipses like like you know uh you know being able to kind of think around the form can can you would you be able to give me and other people tips on how to actually bring something to life you know and have it look it's not it doesn't look you know like real life, but it's 3D, and, and how, do you, how do you translate that? And what, what are the key things that you need to work on in practice to be able to kind of, you know, just um, subconsciously or, or uh, unconsciously kind of put that stuff down on the paper? Okay. Well, the, the un oh. unconscious thing, that's, that's something that, you know, that happens over time. You know, if, if a child learns to, to talk, uh, they won't, uh, be able to to uh, come up with poetry yet so right. you, you know you have to really internalize this language and then you can start playing around with it so uh, you know the fundamentals that's something that you just have to m make part of your system you, uh, and um, when it comes to the the character designs uh, 
you know, the dimensionality is, is really important, especially working for, for CG, when all the characters are going to be 3D models, you can really help the modeler, you know, the guy after you in the process of, of creating this movie uh, by giving him, giving him designs that already show what these characters would look like in, in three dimensions. Um, so it's, it's just a, a skill set that you need to have. But when you focus just on, on you know, the, the dimensionality, um, what, what I often see is that the designs, they become really stiff. So it's really a, a character in a certain pose. So all the body parts, they, they go in different directions and it, it technically, it's correct. But what's missing is, is life. And that is the, uh, you know, the intensity. If, if you are reaching out your arm, it's not just the arm, uh, because the drawing then looks like uh, one of those, uh, uh, you like the wooden know. dummies, the wooden, yeah, the, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So the arm is in the right place, but there is no relationship between the arm and the rest of the body. So if I'm standing and I'm I'm reaching out, you know, I'm I'm maybe changing the weight uh, from my one foot to the other. Uh, my upper body is stretching, and again, if you uh, apply the the principles of animation, you can use squash and stretch to emphasize this. And then you can uh, add gesture to it. So, and I, I like to turn this process around. I like to start with the gesture, and then if I, uh, in just a few angles, if I can uh, nail down the intensity of the pose, that's when I start to add volume to it. Because mm. uh, I found that this gesture is is really important. That's where the life is of my design. If I can show the weight or the or the action. So in, at in that just point, those... sorry, at that point, you're not really thinking about proportions as your primary thought, right? You're just thinking strictly. I want to get the right feeling in the gesture. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because uh, you can uh, translate this gesture to different proportions if, if mm -hmm. you know it, it may take a few drawings if it, maybe it's it, you, you have to change it so much that it doesn't work immediately mm -hmm. uh, but once once the essence of, of the what the pose needs to be is there uh, it's it's much easier because I learned that it doesn't matter if an arm is a little too long in in, in, a, in a stretch uh, that's you know it's it's worse if if the stretch doesn't look like a stretch mm. right so, if it's boring yeah yeah it's exactly worse. yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah wow that's great that's great so so yeah so because for me i like to i like to kind of break it down to like what what the key things are i would need to to practice so it sounds like you know really just practicing a ton of gestures and yeah. and then and then learning the the 3d form as well but making that subservient to the to the the you know interesting and and accurate in a way the gestures are accurate in a way but it's more just getting what you want you know from yeah it and, exactly you know. yeah i i remember uh stephen silver he told me once that he did life drawings uh and it started to become really interesting to him to do the life drawings when he started to exaggerate and mm. not uh not just exaggerate um you know for the sake of exaggerating, uh, you know, making somebody really big or small or something, but exaggerating the what the pose is really about. You know, if if mm. I see, uh, you know, a, a, a lean or a twist, you know, emphasize this twist to. So you, it, uh, I, uh, I like to compare it to to speaking. You know, if I'm, uh, if I say something and I'm mumbling, it's not clear. But if I say things really loud and clear so everybody understands and th then suddenly my message comes across much clearer so it's uh, it's the mm. same message but now now somebody can understand so uh, I think in drawing you just want to be as clear as possible that's awesome yeah if I just want to add a little bit to that you know creating things out of your head that feel structurally sound that was that I remember the challenge and I remember how I got over it. And it was kind of like when you are looking at something and you kind of squint your eyes a little bit or you think about it and you kind of visualize it in brush strokes, perhaps, like what you've said before, John. Um, mm -hmm. Same kind of thing where you're just you're trying to focus on your paper and you're trying to see into your paper. That's what I remember very distinctly 
kind of like uh, you know, back in the '90s, there were these um, these abstract looking kind of paintings where or prints where if you kind of cross your eyes in the right amount, <laughs> yeah. then there's the volume that happens. Right? Dude, I had one of those in my room. They right? Were awesome. yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I, I have the same kind of kind of relationship uh, with my paper and trying to make something structural. I'm trying to get into that zone and kind of focus in to try to see into the paper and and create my structure that way that way i can spot the errors a lot more um mm. yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i think jonathan you you can relate to this also when it comes to painting because uh the structure in character design is is really important and when you're painting you also think of structure and when you add color or, or even more important values there is always this point when suddenly it, it kind of clicks and the whole image starts to feel like it has volume. And I think right. understanding that the structure that's beneath is, is really essential for that because you need to understand the, you know, the direction of the shapes. Uh, one uh, great exercise, I think, uh, is you know, having a character in a, in a certain pose and try just to draw it from different angles, as if you are a cameraman walking around this character and oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's do a, a live idea. drawing of him from another angle. That's, that's such a challenging exercise, but actually it's, it's what a character de designer does all the time, mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily the same pose, but you have to imagine this character almost as a sculpture to, mm. to think of it as, as a th dimensional object. It's definitely yeah, that's tough. Awesome. It's definitely tough, you know, especially oh, with yeah. animated characters. You got to flip from one to the other. You got to think also about the two-dimensional design of it, and then yeah. go back to three dimensions, and then go back mm -hmm. to, uh, yeah, so many things. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting to hear you talk about that because for me, like even exaggerating the pose, like for me, like a lot of people wouldn't think that I'm exaggerating in my work. Like when they see my work, they're like, "He's not exaggerating." But the interesting thing is. Um, I am, I, I would definitely characterize like how I control or how I, how I relay the values and the colors and things like that. I exaggerate that stuff. And, and I remember somebody asking Richard Schmidt, like, do you exaggerate the colors? And he was like, no, you know, and, and, okay. and he said in a video and I was like, yes, he does. I was like, <laughs> he does. I was like, yeah. he, he was basically saying he's taking, like, I think he was taking issue with the fact that he, that they were saying that he was, you know, wasn't pulling from reality, but he's seeing the relationships that are there in reality. And the exact color that he was putting down was actually more intense than what you'd think, you know, like when you're sitting there in mm -hmm. front of it, it's more intense. And it's because he understood the relationships that were there. And then he chose to kind of emphasize those relationships and like, and so yeah. colors and, and value differences and different things like that. Like, it's funny cause it's, it really is the same sort of mentality where you understand the relationship of what's going on. And for a, a pose, uh, it would be the figurative proportional relationship, you know, and then you understand what's happening and, and the movement. And then you, then you emphasize that or exaggerate that or, you know, yeah. uh, which is which is where it really does get interesting. Because for me with painting, that's where it gets interesting. Like when you look at Monet using color, you know, he's he's, quote, exaggerating the color. But really, he's understanding the relationships that are there. And then he's choosing to emphasize certain things. So that's really cool. Yeah. And, and you know, it is always a translation of reality. It, it You right. know, you will never have reality on your canvas or on your, right. or on your paper. Uh, right. so, and, and also what would be the use of right. just right. literally copying reality, exactly. you know, it, it becomes interesting when it's your, it, it, it goes through your filter and you take out what, what it is you see, you know, the, why am I drawing this? Why am I painting this? Uh, that question needs to be answered and, and has to be clear for the viewer. Right. Uh, otherwise it's just, you know. It's just uh, graphite on paper. Let me right. see, let me see if right. this uh, relates to both your guys' uh, thinking here. So, like when I'm doing life drawing or I'm I'm looking at reference, I'm not judging angles. I'm not judging proportions as much as I'm judging almost like in describing words. You know, so I'll look at a person and go, "Yeah, that person is." kind of leaning to the left you know it's just slightly leaning to the left this person you know looks tired it looks you know just no energy almost slumping over instead of going okay that person's back is on this angle it's going to this angle and 
perhaps like with painting as well, like I'll look at something and go, okay, this is a vibrant thing, you know, and I'm not trying to match the exact, you know, uh, saturation that I see. I'm trying to extrapolate the essence of what I see. Right, right. Usually the way I describe it to my students is, is uh, the impression, the impression, like mm. trying to be sensitive enough to get the impression of what, of what's happening there, like an accurate impression. And then you respond to that impression by trying to not duplicate it in, in, uh, in specifics, but in, you know, like, I want to get the same impression. I was just, I was just talking to some about that with a student because he was asking, you know, how do I make my paintings look more loose? Like, how do I accomplish more with one brush stroke? And I said, well, number one, you have to be free and let the brush strokes kind of like have a mind of their own a little bit. But what you're looking for is the same impression of an edge or the same impression of a color or the same impression of a value difference. And if you achieve that and your brush stroke is interesting, then you can leave it. You know, um, it doesn't need to be like if I were to take this piece out of my painting and hold it up to reality or look at, you know, like that. That's I think that's what that's what stops people from having more of a, uh, a freer, like freer brush strokes and things like that, because they're so like they they confuse that accuracy with with um, making it uh, copying. They confuse the accuracy mm. with copying, you know, so let me drop a, a name for the the youngsters out there. Frederick Remington. I think he's a <laughs> they perfect <won't> <laughs> example of pushing colors, pushing light, pushing posing everything to like the right. most simplified version. It uh definitely worth checking out. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we have time for, you know, one or two questions left. So uh John, you want to pick the next one? Sure, sure, no problem, man. Okay, let's see. Let me look through here. Um, okay, let's see. Um, here's a quicker one. How long does it take, on average, for either of you to take a character from concept to completion? Uh, that's always such a hard question. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I thought that. Was... <laughs> it really it varies, depends. right? It really. Depends. Yeah. It, it it completely varies. Yeah. I remember having to do, uh, you know, they were going to make the uh, the Candyland board game into a movie. Uh, I believe Adam Sandler has the uh, rights now. Um, but I was on that project in the very beginning. So when you're designing characters, you n not just have to design according to their personality and create interesting proportions and an interesting overall design, but you also have to think about what, are they actually made of? So you're not going to stick fudge, a uh, fudge character with peppermint arms because that doesn't taste good. You know, right. so then it <laughs> brings yeah. up this whole nother level of complexity. That's funny. Yeah. You know, so many more things to think about. Is everybody around the world going to recognize each of these candies or are they regional? Mm. You know, mm. interesting. Uh, so that's, that's definitely a, a tough, a more complex example. Mm, yeah. Um, here's a, here's a good question. Uh, for how long do you observe an object? This is from Carlos. Uh, do, for how long do you observe an object, model, or animal before you start drawing it? Do you set up a time limit like five minutes or just when you feel that you have fully deconstructed it? Or really dis deconstructed, I'm sorry. Hmm. Not fully. <laughs> I think Wouder yeah, just I... practices just observing all the time, I think. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and for a specific character, it would be when it, you know, when I took from it what I need for my design. Um, because, you know, when you focus on some, you can focus on anything and a whole world will open and you can study something endlessly. Um, but the trick is to, uh, I think what, what I try to do is um, to, uh, what's the word, associate things mm -hmm. so uh first when uh i i get a description for a character you know if i say uh, an an old grandpa you know most people have this image of an old guy uh with with the hat and the big glasses and the cane it's it's a, a, a kind of an archetype everybody the, the first thing everybody comes up with but i want to put that down just to make sure that I got that. And then I come up with more ideas, more ideas, more ideas. And uh, then I start to 
uh, associate uh, in a different way. So this is direct. I'm looking for reference here. So um, when I look for reference for this guy, I'm looking for I Google images uh, of grandpa, grandpas, and, and this is what comes up, and I have different images of the clothing, of the different types of glasses, different types of canes, so that's direct reference. And then I also uh, associate more broadly, and this is where it becomes interesting, because here my design becomes personal. For instance, when I look at the description of the character, and I... I uh, look, what kind of grandpa is this? And I think, hmm, this sounds like, you know, there is something that I relate to a turtle. You know, the, the, the way he moves makes me think mm. of a turtle. So now I start looking for images of, of turtles. And, and, uh, and I do a, a couple of other things just like that. And then I have a lot of reference and... The combination of that is something that's unique. That's something that, uh, Bobby, if you would do this design, you wouldn't come up with this. You'd probably come up with something else. So that's why I think uh, it it will be an interesting design and an interesting uh, thing. Because if I just do the grandpa, everybody comes up with, that's, you know, anybody could do that. But to have our unique uh, approach is, is there where you associate uh, because these can also be personal experiences or, or things that I, you know, experienced in my childhood. Maybe I, I think of my own grandfather and put some things of him in there. Uh, and that's what creates a believable character because I know now what I'm designing. So that's what I really try to I, – I for, completely forgot what the question was. No, no it's good. It relates because they were just asking, like, how long do you observe something and things like that because that relates because yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. you're always doing it and, and, and you're observing yeah. not only just one thing but also multiple things, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so and, yeah, the, and this is really the, the, the way I'm, I'm uh, observing, you know. I'm, I'm trying to find direction for what I'm looking for. I'm not just, uh, you know, studying – how do I draw a grandpa? But I'm I'm really trying to look for a way in to come up with a unique design. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, but it's really good. and the thing I want to push is like so many of the professionals that I've had the pleasure to talk with and everything. The the highest level professionals are always having some sort of like exercise in their head so they're talking to you but they what do they see they see a cartoon version of you or something like right. that you know <laughs> arthur fong was talking about he would just kind of drift off and look at uh different things that he sees and he would look at it and go yeah in photoshop that would be this much h this much <laughs> s this much b you know like right. he thinks right. in sliders uh Glenn Keane, he, if you ever get the pleasure of talking or hang out with Glenn, he is observing you big time, you know, <laughs> just still mm -hmm. having that conversation with you. But these people, they are constantly, constantly, uh, you know, doing that brain workout. Kay does the same thing where she'll, you know, we see something for like, three seconds and then later on that night eight, eight hours later she starts drawing it out and i'm just like holy smokes <laughs> that's awesome yeah that and that's the thing i mean it's it's you know it becomes a it, it, it really does like become a part of you where you're just you know that it's it's you know filtered everything's kind of filtered through that i i remember when that first started to happen to me when i was training and i was like in a in a coffee shop and my wife was like I, you need to pay attention to what I was like, I'm sorry, you know, cause I'm looking at like the colors and looking at stuff like that. And I'm like, I'm sorry. It's like, I felt like all of a sudden I like all these things I had never, I, I, it's like a different world that didn't, that didn't exist to me before. Oh, I didn't yeah, yeah. notice it, you know, and now I could see everything. And it's, it's interesting too, because having kids has actually allowed me to like indulge in that a little bit more because, you know, kids will be like, mm. they'll, they'll stop and they'll be like this is the coolest bug I've ever seen. And it's just, a <laughs> it's like a stink bug. And there's like a bajillion of them around here, you know? And I'm like, I'm like, that is, that is really cool. And they'll, you know, and they, they give me that love back for, uh, for, you know, how things work. And, and, you know, it, it's interesting that way. Cool. 
You should yeah. try uh, doing caricatures for a change. You know, that I, really does something to how you look at people. That's very true. That's awesome. I'm trying to do, you know, kind of like caricatures and really trying to stretch the different types of faces in this uh, video here. If uh, if you're That's watching the video. Different styles. Yeah, it's awesome, yeah. dude. It's It was a struggle. You know, I, I definitely <laughs> felt like... I got to start drawing more people <laughs> instead of creatures all day. But it was definitely fun. And, and something that was really neat and just totally unconscious is how, how much, you know, some of these cartoonier ones, I totally feel like I ripped off uh, Shane Glines. So I want to give a big shout out to Shane Glines because he <laughs> was a definite big influence to me um, earlier on in my career. And now, obviously, it's seeping out in some of these. Uh, faces <laughs> it's gonna awesome. you know it's gonna happen sometimes you know that's good <laughs> it's an homage you know yeah <laughs> yeah and the one thing i i should definitely mention that i haven't yet is that there generally there's like two uh schoolism sales a year right one is happening right now it is uh, 33 percent off one third off of the subscriptions of all the subscription classes so instead of paying a very affordable 15 dollars a month you're paying a very very affordable price of 10 dollars a month for your first six months so you can get on to Wouter's class expressive characters uh, or jonathan's class essentials of realism if you're ever looking to level up the best way to do it is to get lessons from somebody and then you do the assignments that they designed which is exactly what is available on schoolism to really absorb the knowledge and i just want to point out too that all three of us talked about the classes that we're still taking so it's not like you know yeah. if if you guys are wondering like oh should i do it weird we're doing it mm. we're and i'm like i wish seriously all day long all i could do is just take i could have like like 10 schoolism classes lined up and just oh, be like absolutely. I, I mean that would be like so awesome so you know i wish i could do that right now <laughs> so you guys do it if you can you know i mean really like you know if, if especially when you're in the student stage like you take that for granted like that's an awesome stage like you get to just study and learn and it's it's fantastic you know and you start getting bogged down with work and stuff like that and you have to really make time struggle to make time to to do that so yeah take advantage of it especially when there's a sale man jump on it yeah and and i'd like to add to that uh regardless whether you do the the self-taught or the one-on-one -on -one, uh really do the exercises because uh yeah. that's what what will make the difference you know you have to do these drawings yourself or otherwise it's just watching somebody else you mm -hmm. know, having fun and 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 it's <laughs> it's it, you know it's. I think Bobby had this example of of watching a a, a workout video and expecting to to become <laughs> stronger just by watching right. it. You know, you have to do the exercises. Right. Uh, and and same thing is true for for schoolism. Absolutely, absolutely. Right on. Well, with that, I want to just say thank you to the audience for hanging out, asking all the wonderful questions. I want to thank my co-host, Jonathan Hardesty, Essentials of Realism. Check it out on Schoolism. And, of course, uh, we want to thank our wonderful guest, my buddy, Wouter Tulp, uh, teaches expressive yeah, characters on Schoolism as well. Definitely check those out. Uh, and thank I'm Bobby much. Chu, and so, yeah. Thank you very much, I'm guys. Gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take your class, man. Like, I'm so intrigued. I'm totally gonna do cool. it. Cool. <laughs> Thank you very much. I would love to see <laughs> what awesome. you come up with, John. That would be very. Oh my gosh, interesting. it would be stretching me. It'd be stretching me because that's stuff like <laughs> that I have not thinking. done. So yeah. it'd be, it'd be awesome. Yeah. All right, guys. Cool. Well, take care, and uh, we'll see you guys uh, next week. Subscribe to this channel so you won't miss out on the latest artist interviews, tutorials, and other news slash advice made especially for the art community. If you find these videos helpful, pass them on to the other artists in your life. Thanks for watching.